so thank you so much uh, summer for being the moderator for my session and i'll quickly deep dive you know into the topic which i have for today and i think 40 minutes is too less because i have lot of things to cover in the buzz industry or the buzz word copilot and where we are going to you know just start building our own copilots in copilot studio so that is the today's topic transform copilot development with microsoft copilot studio and i know i have lot of slides but i am not going to go through each slide it is for your reference if you want to pick this up and create your own copilot because i am going to demo it live and we'll create our own copilots okay so quickly i'll give my introduction um myself shrushti shah and i'm also a microsoft mvp and i am microsoft certified as well in lot of certifications apart from that i majorly work on microsoft 365 power platform azure and infrastructure as a code a uh, bit and bit uh, pieces of azure iac where majorly it is you know arm templates or powershell or terraform okay so this is a short introduction about myself and i work as a technical consultant at rapid circle coming to today's agenda so i've kept it very nicely so you all can relate with me uh, whenever you go after this or whenever you get time to play around with copilot studio you remember all the bits and pieces and you know what mistakes you don't have to make while creating copilot for your own self uh, so the agenda is pretty simple uh, i'll just walk you through copilot studio and definitely to create your own copilots you need access to copilot studio and definitely there are subscription limits or licenses involved we'll check on that and the important uh, factor probably all of you might know power virtual agents right and if you aren't aware about what power virtual agents are you do not need to worry power virtual agents were low code no code bots and now power virtual agent is renamed as copilot and all your copilots will sit under one home called as copilot studio it is not just this this is uh, not just it it offers many more features like conversational ai features or ai plugins and lot more we will see in the studio itself and as i have mentioned we will create our own copilot with conversational plugin and we i have already published it into my teams channel we will see what all channels you can publish how you can interact and definitely few minutes for feedback i hope that uh, this will be helpful for you so i uh, feedback is always welcome yes straight to the topic copilot studio now um, we all have heard about copilot as of now because copilot you can assume it as a bot where you type in any question or you want to generate some images or text or post etc everything uh, will you will get it in the copilot that is what copilot is right now where this copilot studio fits into your uh, shoe so copilot studio is a home as i mentioned and what it offers is you can create your own low code no code copilots which were previously called as power virtual agents now when i talk about copilots you can definitely go ahead and create the primitive way wherein you have topics you chain it up you ask question you post responses trigger a flow and publish it into teams that that is still there you can do that but there are a lot more fu functionalities like generative ai functionalities you can also plug in your different connectors right inside your copilot irrespective of creating a topic probably right now it might not sound like you might know everything but this is what it offers i'll skip this and we'll uh, go to the a short video which i have for you what copilot is and you will understand how where copilot fits into the picture okay so this is the copilot where you can create it in your own way i have not turned on the music just i want to show you uh, how copilot fits in so what here you are seeing is in the copilot space you are asking a question and right now before using copilot if i just ask a question it will not respond me it will just say i am sorry i can't help it but when i create my copilot and published it it will you can perform actions like you can create or you can add data to it you can get the data etc update add delete all the cred operations this is how the chaining looks like and it was published definitely once it is published it is ready to go so this is in short what copilot ha uh, has to offer and how you can use use it you will see it in the demo don't worry access important part 
Now, how you can access Copilot Studio, right? That is the utmost important part. If I want to create my own Copilot, how I can do that? You can do it in two ways. One is the web application and the Teams app. So the Power Virtual Agent interface, where you go to your Power Apps. Let's just go ahead and see it instead of talking. Okay. So I am into my Power Apps homepage, and here you you just have to go to More section, and in you just have to click in Chatbots. Once I click on chatbots, you will see all the co-pilots which I have created for my environment. Right now, I am in one environment. Uh, I have created some of the co-pilots in both the environments. So as you can see, these are some of the co-pilots. Let me just go to the other environment where I have the correct license. I want to show the difference. So there are two licenses which I have. Let's just go to the admin center. Okay, so this you know where the where your copilots reside in your Power Apps. You can see chatbots and all your copilots sit here. You can also go ahead and create new copilot, edit, delete, share, uh, edit. You can see the analytics, everything here. Let's just go to the admin center because I want to show you how you can enable the generative AI features, which are the new features for the Copilot Studio. Now the default environment. I'll go here. And it doesn't, you know, have generative features. When I go and create, okay, coming back to my default, and let me just go ahead and create a chatbot or open the one. Yes, let's go ahead. I haven't done any configuration. I've just created, added the name, and the bot or copilot was created. And if I go into my settings and go into my generative AI features, you see everything is disabled for me. I can't even enable it. Why that is so? Because if I go to my environment, this is the environment. Here, there is a new section called Generative AI Features. Now, the region where this environment was created doesn't support. Uh, okay, so hence, what I have to do is, if I have to add Generative AI Features, I have to move data across regions. Once I check this box, you can see more terms. You are ready to use Generative AI Features into your Copilot Studio. This is the difference which I wanted to show you between the two environments. Now let me go back to the other environment where I already have that enabled. I don't see generative AI feature section here, but I need to make some configurations or some settings. I'll go to the settings. I'll go to the features, and you see the Copilot. This is just for your Power Apps. All you need to do is make the generative AI features uh, into your Environment settings, which we saw, the card that should be it. But if you want that Power Apps Copilot and Power Automate Copilot, the panel, then you just have to check this on. So this is not relevant to Copilot Studio, but this is the new feature. If you want to go ahead and create your apps and Power Automate, you can. You just have to turn this on. So just an extra piece of knowledge. Let's just go ahead and go back to our discussion on Copilot Studio. So now you are aware how you have to turn on the generative AI features, and if your environment is not in a particular region, you can definitely check that box, and you are ready to go. Okay. So coming back to my environment where I already have generative AI feature, and I'll go to the Power Apps. So we start and look at Copilot Studio. So before we talk about Copilot Studio, let me just create a new chatbot and edit one of Okay, I want to show one important piece, which is the architecture. Yes. So now, when I talk about Copilot Studio, you see this is the beautiful architecture which I pick it up from Microsoft uh, Learn documentation. And here, I would let me just pick up the laser. Yeah. Here you can see this is the Copilot Studio, and these are the channels. So let's just take a look at it one by one. How this is integrated all together. When I talk about Copilot Studio, it is nothing but you can create your own low code, no code copilots. Okay, so that copilot you can also add your generative AI features. Plus, you can also add more AI plugins. So now, when I talk about generative AI features, there is a new term called as generative answers, where you just there is no need of you create for you to create a topic. It is just you add your any web Type or any data source like SharePoint, website, either it can be public or private, or documents, anything, and your bot is ready to go. Or my bad, Copilot is ready to go. You just have to publish it to any of the channels. These are the channels, 
and it is ready for you to use so when we call about generative answers all that interaction is happening through azure open ai okay so this is where it is linked now you can also create your own custom topics in this what new microsoft is providing is you can directly use connectors so for example let's say previously if i have to send out an email i used to trigger a power automate flow in that power automate flow i used to chain those actions together and pass that response to my power virtual agent which is now called as copilot and then you used to use that right this to reduce this gap microsoft is providing for you to use plugins so these plugins are nothing but the connectors which you can directly use so either you can directly use them as a separate topic or you can chain it up in the topic as well next plugin actions so now you can also use your custom connectors just like the out of the box connectors use it separately into your copilots no need of going to the flow definitely you can do that if you have multiple uh, actions chaining up but if you just have to work with one or two things then go ahead and straight up use it in your copilot system topics will always stay as it is but this is new which is bought up in copilot studio rest you can see that same you can call your flows and more you can also call your custom connectors or http triggers which is mentioned here also you can also have your ai builder actions or which you used to use it in power automate similarly you can use it here in topics as a topic or irrespective of topic just as a connector use it next what it provides is all this underlining data is residing in dataverse you get it there you can also take up all the analytic information like how many sessions this bot has used is there any conversation like generative ai responses which were generated all this analytics will get it and separately you can also create your own custom entities which resides into your copilot studio similarly to the previous interface so this is whole in whole your architecture for copilot studio next important part is when when you publish a copilot where it can be used what are the channels where you can use it teams is definitely one of the channels but next is the new pre to feature microsoft 365 chat or copilot so you can publish it this this copilot as part of microsoft 365 copilot as well and you are ready to, like whenever you will type in something it will uh, just pick up any of the topic and it will start responding and that is called as dynamic chaining i'll show it to you in the demo because you will not be able to understand it here so coming back to our our demo okay so now copilot studio you understand it right there is two important things one is generative ai feature and the other is plugins which are floating around i'll club this whole piece of information into two things copilot studio has two offerings one is conversational ai a conversational feature and the ai plugins so now what i'm doing here is i'm going to create a teams nation bot a copilot teams nation in english language you can pick it up in any of the language and here you can give any of the website so now let me do one thing i'll tweak i'm not going to use public website i'm going to use a sharepoint website okay so let's just go ahead and pick up a sharepoint website so you understand how it will be authenticated that is the reason i'm not picking a public one because public is very straight forward we'll get the information i'll pick up this website and i'm going to add it where is it yeah once i am done i'll create so it will take few seconds to create now what i'm going to do is whenever you use sharepoint as a source okay you have to make up make few authentication for you to use it how do you make that authentication let's see the time it is getting created we'll go back to the one which i already have to just show you the authentication part we will do it in the existing one as well you have to create an app you have to register that app on your azure active directory right now i have my license on azure and i have i am the ad admin hence i was able to create it but if you aren't then ask your admin to create register an app and what you have to do is you have to go to the authentication like security pick up authentication your you see you have to you know authenticate manually and how you are going to authenticate you are going to add the security provider this is the redirect uri which you have to add it on your app registration client id client secret and here the important factor scopes so as you can see i have just added scopes as profile in open id 
but you also have to add sites and files once you are done adding it then your bot or copilot will know hey i have access to read sites i have access to read all the files uh, on which are published or uploaded in the document library only then you will be able to up, just start interacting with the bot copilot so let's just go ahead this is the one which i have integrated and if i go to the generative ai section you see this is the site which i have added i haven't done anything else what i can do is i'll go to the site to show you what information i have in the documents library i have uploaded few prompt guides and some prompt toolkit okay so i'm going to ask my copilot something related to prompt how efficiently now let's turn this on and see where the conversation goes okay it will take few seconds because it is loading all the data from the yes okay so now the important factor is not the response but how and where this flow of conversation went the trigger i did not create okay so i did not create any of the topics you see there is no topic which is created for by me it was just one website which was added next it triggered on itself because it is using conversation boosting it went ahead and used the generative answers action this you can get it uh, i'll show you show it where you can use this in your topics as well it went through this and later whatever prompt or question did i i asked it went through the data source and gave me back the information from that site so your data source is linked if you see the data source is added and the connection is already made by me using the authentication so now if you look at the response it is also referring to some of the information let me click on this and it will open the file directly what i did is i went ahead and i have published this to the channel the teams channel if i open the teams channel you see this copilot sp bot and let me just ask in another question give me some information about microsoft ai tour and this information is residing in the sharepoint page site page let's see if it is able to get waiting for a minute it should come up any time soon okay it did give me the information and it is giving me the reference as well that hey ai tour is an exclusive one day event and it has some sessions which are expert led what exactly next yes so it has redirected me not to the public site but exact resource where the information was this is the site page and in the in that site page i had uploaded some documents this is just it this is so amazing you just have to give your share point you have to authenticate it and you are ready to use that i did not create even one topic or any custom entity not at all i am just using the conversation ai generative ai feature now coming back to our uh, other topic which is where exactly this conversation boosting or generative ai answers is residing in the generative ai section here i can definitely add my share point or public website or private website but keep in mind that you can only add up to two layers like as you can see this is the home site i can't two slashes up to two slashes you can add it you can't change it more more next whenever you upload files there is this a limitation like you can only upload up to 3 mb of file this is these are the few information which i have to take care about also in my slide i have talked in detail like if you go back this is just a purely demonstration and making you familiar with copilot studio what kind of url you, you can use what what are the do's and don'ts of using the url everything i have mentioned so that you can use it clearly coming next to our conversational booster now if i go to the conversation let me just pick it up yes conversational plugin so as i mentioned copilot you can extend it into two things conversational and ai plugins if i add a conversation plugin you just have to add few triggers maybe this will act as your own topic you can just create you know one separate 
this con plugin for your uh, some SharePoint answering. Let's say get information about AI tour. This can be one of the trigger. You can add more. Next, what I want to show is generative answers. So in my advanced, you see generative answers. This is where the flow went. And what you have to configure here is you have to configure your data source, public SharePoint. Just add your SharePoint and click on add. Once you are done, connection definitely have to maintain that. Once it is connected, you're good to go. And you can pass in some input from the you know previous questions or messages and you can take output as well. So this is even if you are not you know entering that website when you're creating Copilot, you can still leverage this generative answers action altogether. So this was Cop uh, conversational plugin. Now coming back to the, let me just go back. I'm not going to save it. The other important factor, don't, oops, yeah, please. Yes, which I'm going to talk about is AI plugins. So now these topics are nothing but you create, you add triggers on those triggers. You can, you know, invoke this topic where your conversation will flow. Either you can ask questions, post a message, trigger a flow, all that you can do. Another new thing which Microsoft has bought in Copilot Studio is plugin action. This is in preview. If I click on it, you see, I can see the connectors which we used to see in Power Automate. Now let's just go ahead and pick any, okay, get forecast for today, just a sample. Once I pick this up, you will see all the information, details about this connector, definitely want to make a connection. This is similar to what we do in Power Automate. Unless and until you authenticate it, you won't be able to move ahead. I've made the connection. This is showing me some details about the action. So I'm going to use the get forecast for today action. This is the model display name and model description. And some of the more information like as the user before running this action. I don't want it. I, I, I straight away said no. You can edit and configure more. Here lies the important stuff, inputs and outputs. So now what inputs you have to pass in to get the information from this connector, location and units. So let's just go ahead and edit. Location, I want it to be hard coded. Let's say I want to give it as Mumbai. Okay. And units, still, I will go ahead and there are two units which you can use. I will use this Celsius. Okay. Save it. Finish. Once you are done processing this plugin, you will see it added. It will take a few seconds. Done. And where this is added? Here in the plugins action. Now this is done. This is added. What I can do is this you can directly start interacting with, but the important factor. Now let's say I've I have many plugins. One is for SharePoint, which is creating the item and reading the item or updating the item. Let's say just SharePoint CRUD operations, list CRUD operations. Now I don't want to create a separate topic for each of them. Let this do its job by its own. How can I do that? Using the most important part, dynamic chaining. So going back to the generative AI feature, here you will see the dynamic chaining. Toggle this on. Now what this dynamic chaining does? Let's say I am going to, I, I am writing a prompt of create an item in SharePoint list. Now based on the model use, use case, which we have, you know, which we pass in the AI plugin, it will relate, hey, yeah, this is the action which you are targeting to, and it will start giving me the responses or it will ask me questions if I have, if I have not configured the inputs. Let's just save and refresh. It doesn't need refresh, but still I will just start asking a question. Get the weather. Okay, let's see whether it works or no. Wow, you see, I did, because I hard coded the location Mumbai, if I haven't done that, let's see how, what it tells you. I haven't created the topic, okay? Now we want to see how well it, it is in use usage. So I'll click on the plugin. I'm going to just configure it back. Okay, this is the, let's go back to the inputs. And I'm going to, I'm not going to dynam, uh, set it, hard code it, and 
units it can stay as it is save it and now once so you see what it is saying topic is saved so each plugin in itself is a separate topic but if you want you can still go ahead create a custom topic and add this plugin as part of your conversation as well let's go ahead and see get the weather okay type in enter now what it does because if it remembers the context then it will now let me just refresh get the weather okay now there is no context of where i am located which location i am asking yes you are you go what is the location i will say paris oops that is mispronounced okay that is right it doesn't have any such location get the weather you can also redirect it when you create a topic right now the information is not that good it is just throwing an error because we are using the api at the end so you have to change the conversation in the topic to make it to respond it in a more a nice survey okay please okay go ahead and ask the question it will take few seconds let's see should come up any time okay it is not coming up let's refresh got stuck on maybe on my internet get my weather he asked me a location yes i will add paris and it should give back the information yes here you go so this is how you can play around with the plugins and this is not it you can have your different plugins like sharepoint dataverse custom connectors so coming to the different parts of plugins this is one such you know connector which we just saw about going back to the copilots to see what it has to, what more it has to offer so now when i go to the plugins that was just one part which we saw the plugin actions yes if i create new ai plugin i have few more options as well what else can i create is i can use ai builder prompts so now there is a new space for your prompts in the power platform it is called ai hub let's just go and check that out this is the ai hub where you can definitely go ahead and use pre built prompts like summarize content or classify the text so these are you know some of the my ai capabilities and ai models if i go and my ai prompts yes you see these are you know few of the pre built ones few of them but you can also go ahead and create a custom prompt there is this one example which i created like whenever you receive an email in your mailbox probably that is the follow up email okay and if it is identified with some project name i want it you know i have created the prompt so that give me the pending tasks uh, assigned to so and so email okay so this is you know the just a prompt wherein it is identifying all the completed and pending tasks for from a follow up email so that you get the information which is important and you don't have to read through the whole email this is one such example of custom prompt next i think summarize they are giving it uh, microsoft is giving it by itself you can summarize text but you can also add on few more uh, context to it like summarize in less than 50 words or summarize it in a paragraph or bulleted points etc you can create your own custom prompts these custom prompts or pre built ones if i go back here if i click on it it will ask me to create a new one okay either you can create a new one or if you already have created it just like what we saw then coming back to the space so that i don't have to switch over and over again yes plugin actions you have you can see all those here 
you see that connectors, custom connectors, skills, flows, data was, and few of my, these are my AI builder prompts, summarize content, AI builder models. I can use straight away and I can just, you know, pick it up. It will have inputs and outputs similar to what we just saw and it is ready to use. Another way you can use it is you can just go ahead and create a topic from here, just a sample topic, add some triggers and just add call and action. If you click on call and action, you see plugins. You will find all your plugins, whichever you have created it here and get a row will just, you know, you can straight away use it just like how you use it in the Power Automate flow. You just have to configure the inputs, outputs, that done. You're ready to use. Going back, we saw the capability, right? The other part is custom automation. So definitely you can use custom connectors here as well. This is, this is uh, normal Power Automate flows, plus you can use custom connectors. So if you click on custom automation, it will redirect you to the Power Automate, where now you have new skills as uh, action. So this is the run a uh, run a flow from copilot and respond to copilot. This is similar to what we used to previously do for PowerShell agent. And in between, you just have to add your automation, whatever you want to do. This is the next thing. And the other is update or get answers about external data. So if your data is in some legacy system or on-prem or anywhere, which is where you don't have uh, Microsoft connectors, you can't directly use it. Then you go ahead and create a custom connector and link it you're ready to use. So these are some of the AI plugins which are offered as part of Copilot Studio. The other important part, you we already just saw this one, add an AI plugin. This is the new where you can definitely go ahead and you can directly use OpenAI plugins as well into your Copilot experience. So you just have to pass the URL or upload the file and you're ready to use. These are a few of the important aspects which I want to talk about today. And coming back to our co-pilot experience where we are creating it, we just, what we observed is few of the things, like how you can create conversational, uh, you can utilize native AI features, how you can use dynamic chaining, and definitely go ahead and use plugins, which we saw. Next important is publishing. Now, when you want to publish it to some channel, how you can do that? You just have to go to the settings. You have to go to the channels. Let me just leave this space. And this is what it offers as of now. Because it is right now not published, the this one, I, I will not be able to uh, directly use it, but few of the examples I've already done. You can directly publish it to the Teams, or this is the new thing. You can publish it as part of Microsoft Copilot. This is in preview. You see publish the plugins to a Copilot. Right now, once you have published it, it, it will be ready to use. Now, what that example, the video which I showcased, what they did there is, in the AI plugins, you just have to add your each plugin. Maybe you can create it in the topic as well. But let's say the crude operations, the normal example, create, read, update, delete. Have all your plugins here instead of creating topics. Once you are done doing that, just publish this into the teams. And whenever you uh, just add any prompt related to either you want to create an item or read an item or get details, it will directly, because the dynamic chaining is turned on, Based on the model name and description, it will know what exactly plugin it has to call to. So it will just call that plugin and it will start responding back to your responses. So this is the exact example which we just saw in that video where a user was inputting some information and it was uh, trying to get something from Workday or anything. And it just picked that information from plugin and it gave to the user in the Copilot, Microsoft Copilot. So that is where the conversational, you know, the plugins, AI plugins fit into the picture. More definitely we saw about generative AI. We saw about channels. The other important aspect which I want to touch upon is analytics. Now, as we, whenever we go ahead and use Copilot, definitely there are some information which you might want to uh, check as an admin or as a Copilot owner. You just, you know, want to see how many sessions were used, the billing in impact and how users are using it. So all those summary, you can find it here. In the summary section, this is a Power BI report, which will be generated. Let's see for one of the uh, pilots, which I have built. 
so that we can relate it more better. Where is my pilot? Go pilot. Yes. This one. We'll go to the analytics. And we'll pick the updating date. This takes some time to load as this is Power BI report, which is getting generated for you. And it also has another section called boost conversation. So whenever wherever this boost conversation, which is generative answers used using that, like AI is generating an information and it is not fetching directly from any source. That is where this boost conversational reporting will be. You can just directly check where all this was used. Loading up. Okay, please. Generate. I want to see the boost conversation because the SharePoint, yes, GPT answers rate. You or you will be seeing a graph and what went wrong. Yes, generate. This ideally takes some time to load as per my observation. And another thing till the time this loads, you can definitely go ahead and create it in any of your own language as well. Just like when we created the copilot, you have seen which language you want your copilot to be in. You can just have that language feature as well. If I go to the other copilot here, there is languages. Here you can add English was a primary language, but you can also add these all languages as well. So Chinese, Danish, French, German, Hindi, Italian, Indonesian, Korean, all the languages. This much are supported as of now. You can pick any of the one. Let's say I pick it up one and add. This will be my secondary language now. So you can do that as well. This is a secondary language and you can remove any time. But the two languages my co-pilot will work on is English and Hindi. You can have your, this is taking up some time. Okay, let it be. We'll go back to the slides. This style run through in one or two minutes. We touched upon almost everything. Okay. I want to go back to just have one important piece of Copilot Studio licensing. So as you can see, I have noted down that Copilot Studio, if you want this uh, as part of license, it is $200. And that $200 in that you get 25,000 messages per month. Okay. So if you have, you know, uh, if you are trying to inculcate this for your, for your organization, then it is advised that, you know, you, you can add more add-ons. Like this is just one. You can, if you buy four such, then it will be one lakh. Uh, messages per month, which if you have more users who are going to use this. So this is how the licensing works. This I wanted to just capture. And this is just the limits of Copilot Studio Web and Teams app. So when we talk about web, just now what we saw was the Copilot Studio Web experience. If you go to the Teams, Microsoft Teams, there is a Copilot Studio app separately into your app store. You can go ahead and create there as well. And the limits, you can see it from the screen. Topics, you can create 1,000 per bot as part of web app, while in Teams, 250. In web app, you can have 200 per topics, like as a trigger phrase, and skills. All the references are also mentioned. Studio subscription limits, we already saw this. Generative AI, we did capture. And this is for you. If you want to go ahead and recap about how we created the co-pilot, this is the small piece of information. You can use it and create your simple boosted copilot from the copilot studio. This is simple topic creation. Next, generative answers, which we already saw. This is important UL consideration. What all URLs you should use and you should, shouldn't. Social networks are, are not advisory to use it. Definitely, you can use URLs, which are public website, SharePoint, or private ones. If you're using private, then authentication has to be set up. And how much levels of information or uh, the URL can hold, that information is in your different type of plugins, conversational AI. Recapping with AI plugins, we saw about how you can you know, use builder prompts, flows, custom connectors, or AI plugins. This we directly saw in the studio. Next, 
if you want to go ahead and create the AI plugin which we created, how you can create it, these are simple steps. You can link automation, like you can just call or invoke your Power Automate flow, also custom connectors and open AI plugin. We just talked about it and I would just request you all that if you really enjoyed this, if this has helped you in some other other way, maybe uh, you can, if you have any queries, you can definitely reach out to me right now. I, I am happy to address and please do share the feedback for not just for my session, but for the whole event because organizers, moderators have done a, and speakers have done a lot of efforts in uh, grabbing this content for you and there are a lot of efforts put in behind the scenes. So please do rate my session or the event as a whole. I'm ready to take up questions. Thank you so much for listening to me so patiently. <laughs> Great session. Thank you so much for taking the time to give that.